Hello, and welcome to Weed and Grub. I saw a different podcast that started with show dates. I think we should start with show dates. Okay. I'm tired of burying how great we are live underneath an episode. Oh, I'm plugging our live shows at the end? Yeah. Up top. Show dates, baby. Hell yeah. 420 at the Ice House in Pasadena, everyone. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Well, I mean, it's going to be hard to follow that Sketchfest show that we just had. I mean, phenomenal. Thank you to our guests. Thank you for everyone who came out to San Francisco Sketchfest. Um, thank you to... A few people in particular that we will talk about in a little bit. We certainly will. So, show dates. 420, Ice House in Pasadena. <laughs> um, 3-8, I'm at the Comedy Store. Uh, the last four days in February, I'm in Montana. Billings, Missoula, two other places in Montana with the Gateway Show. Um, 3.30, I'm recording my album, two shows at the Hollywood Improv. You're just saying them all out of order, and it's making me crazy, but yes. Okay. <laughs> February. End of February, I'm in Montana. No, it's nice. I'll say them as many times as because I want people to come. Uh, February, uh, end of February, I'm in Montana with the Gateway Show. And then we're in Alaska. We're in Alaska. Yes, we are um, going to Ketchikan, mm -hmm. which is very exciting in Southeast. So if any of you live in Ketchikan or anywhere around there, come hang out with us. Please come hang out with us. And then flying back here to LA for March 8th at the Comedy Store Glazers After Party. I'm going to walk. Rory Scoville. I'm going to run. <laughs> uh, Rory Scovel, Paul Walter Hauser, Lisa Curry, Alex Hooper, me. I mean, wow. Come on. What are you Dynamite. talking about? Dynamite. And Paul Walter Hauser is coming off getting a guitar smashed on his head by Jeff Jarrett and winning two Critics' Choice Awards for Blackbird with uh, Taron. Holy shit. Dude's on fire. He sure is. So come watch him do stand-up and then come watch me run my hour before I run it on March 30th at the Hollywood Improv 2 show, 7.30 and 9.30. Tickets are affordable. And I'm working on a sponsor. So if you're listening to this and you want to uh, maybe hook a bunch of people Holy in the shit. audience up with some stuff. We haven't even done the intro. Come on. Hey. <laughs> I'm here to fucking buy a house in the hills. Gotcha. Unapologetically. All right. Well, you know what I'm saying? Good. Good. All right. Sorry I'm yelling. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to see you, Mike. I'm glad to be here recording with you. What up, Mary Jane? How's it going, Mike? Uh, spicy. Spicy. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome to Weed and Grub, everyone. This is a podcast about comedy. Cannabis. Cooking. Culture. Calling shit out. And um, spicy meatballs. I, uh, and um, Calm. I'll be a little more calm. Yeah. I can I can chill. I'm just not chill right now, yo. I feel you on that. But, you know, today's app, I, we're recording on Valentine's Day. I'm sending my um, Valentine's out to everyone who listens to this podcast and all of the people who showed up for us in San Francisco. And hopefully we'll come to all of these fun shows that we have. You know, it's, it's really cool to be doing live shows out in the world again. And, and also to you, Mike. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, Mary Jane. I know you're a crotchety crabbity sometimes, but I, you're also it's you've been got a, a really big hard heart. week. I know, I know. Like I'm just gonna be real. Like yeah. uh, to everyone who is listening to this and is like, damn, he is a little bit uh off. It's been a really hard week. Do you wanna talk about it? Um some of it I will talk about and some of it I won't talk sure. about. Sure. What would you like to talk about? Um hmm, just pretend nothing that I'm yet. like I'm like um pretend Esther, you're Peter. Esther Perel. Who's Esther Perel? Esther Perel is this wonderful I think she's Belgian. She's a like a psychotherapist, a, th a talk therapist, and she does like counseling and she has a couple of different podcasts, but she's just brilliant and she talks to couples and single people and all sorts of stuff about like relationships and relationship dynamics and she's just incredibly the way she phrases things she's one of my favorite people to listen to about like how just how to be in the world and how to treat yourself better so that you can be better and all that kind of stuff and I just you know I, feel, I think everyone would you know lo love to be more more like her feel more like her because she works through the hard stuff in a really cool way you know um is she the one who has couples on yes. and then releases the actual therapy session yes. that she has with those couples or that individual. Exactly. Where yeah. should we begin? It's where should called. we begin? Yeah, I think that's the name of that podcast. She's fucking great. Well, so, where should we begin, Esther? <laughs> where should we begin? I'm not your therapist, obviously. We're, you know, not going to have that dynamic in our relationship, but um, like I, I'm here to hear any of it no. or all of it. No, I think that the best course of action for me for this podcast is when it does rain, it does pour. But um, you can create your own sunshine. So I'd rather have a really great time with you on here. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, you know, a couple of things have to do with a couple of topics that we are going to talk about on this app. So I'll openly talk about those and other ones. Uh, if I do end up talking about it, 
it's just going to make me a mess. Okay. So I would much rather um, not. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is, yeah, 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 out the gate. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of cool stuff to get into. So where would you like to start with that? Well, I would actually like to start with a little bit of a Valentine's gift from our friend in studio. Thank you to Pussyweed, a.k.a. Natasha, uh, who gave both of us these Valentine's Day cards that say you're the best bud a stoner could ask for. That's so You're the only person I text more than my weed plug. That's Uh, lovely. Thanks, Pussyweed. Thank you, Natasha. Those are such like an old-fashioned Valentine in the mail. Come on. It's just the best. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, growing up, make valentine boxes and all of that was that in canada do we as have well? that in canada yes, yes. <laughs> yeah do you have valentine's in canada yes we also have valentine's day in canada and we did do the whole valentine's thing where as a kid you would make an envelope out of construction paper and you would hang it off the side of your desk and then people would put valentine's in there and you would count them at the end of the day and it was always weird because you know the popular kids would always get all the valentine's and then you know some kids wouldn't get very many at all and the teachers would try and make sure that like you know everyone got at least one wait your Valentine's Day were not equal opportunity Valentine's Day cards to everyone? Like the parents weren't buying a 48 piece because no. there were 40 students? No. You every... made each one for each person? Yes. And then like you. That's so cutthroat. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my school had the strap, you know, we had corporal punishment, like it was no joke. The strap meaning hitting people. Yeah, the teachers would hit people. And we were, yes, absolutely. As a lefty, <laughs> would I have gotten the strap? No, not for being left-handed, but for misbehaving, for like, you know, sassing a teacher back or pushing someone on the playground. You would have to go down. The worst part was they would send you to the principal's office to get the strap, and then you had to bring the instrument of your own torture back to the teacher, who would then give you the strap in front of the class. Whoa. Yeah, it was it was a real deal. Like, I don't think it happened all that often. It certainly wasn't daily or even necessarily weekly, but you well, lived in fear of the strap, and... Um, yeah, not everyone got the same amount of Valentines. It was, um, yeah, pretty mercenary. That's so crazy. Yeah, killer. Because I do know, like, there's all those hack jokes about, like, um, these new generations, it's a participation generation where sure. everyone's a winner. They're all soft or but whatever. But if it's Valentine's Day, I feel like everyone in the class should get a Valentine from everyone else. It's true. Everyone should receive love on Valentine's Day. It shouldn't necessarily be about romantic love. It should just be about, like, yeah, giving giving each other kindness for sure. I just I remember, like, counting the um, Valentines that were in my little construction paper envelope and feeling like I was solidly in the middle somewhere. Like, I wasn't a super popular kid, but I also – you know, didn't suffer. Like there were a couple kids in my class. I remember Danielle and Brian. She like there's always one girl and one boy, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, Danielle, I I really felt for because um, she at one point in like grade two or three came to school and we put our mittens on the radiator to dry from the snow, and her mittens smelled like cat pee and like it suffused the whole like the, you know t- definitely not her fault. Nothing she was in control of. It it obviously happened and she hadn't noticed and. All these stray you know, cats poured in the window. No, it was just horrible. Ugh. Like, I remember everyone was so mean to her after yeah, that. And they just course. said terrible things to her. And then I can't remember what, you know, Brian's totally non-issue was that he did that everyone then fucking piled on him for. But, yeah, we were, people were mean. People bullied people. That's really wild. I won- I went by Brian. I've told you that before. Because yeah. I, I hated the name Michael. And so I had uh, Spike was my nickname when I hung out with the dudes. Yeah. I went by Spike. <laughs> and when I hung out with the chicks, it, it was uh, Brian. Because I thought that was like a popular, cool nickname. Mm-hmm. Um, Brian Austin Green style, 90210 style. Okay. Every, I, I feel like every Brian is hot. Yeah. Um, Danielle's a tough one, though. Yeah. Yeah. I love the name Danielle. I've always thought it was so beautiful. I really wanted to be called Cordelia, though, you know. That's cool. I, I was like, that's a that's a like a fairy tale name to me. Yeah, you know, I was like, if only if only my name was Cordelia, then maybe Jason Auchinleg wouldn't punch me in the face and give me two black eyes. Jason, 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 Jason. fucking Auchinleg, man. He Yo, if we're gonna name to if we're gonna name elementary names this yeah. episode, let's do it. Jason Auchinleg gave me two black eyes. Okay. And also, there was another kid. Uh, whose name was Mike, actually, and I can't remember his last name, but he... Well, I just had a moment where I felt like Esther or whatever her name okay. is. Okay, and then Mike. <laughs> this this uh, kid named Mike, who was probably, I think he was like maybe even a teenager. He was definitely like 11 or 12, and he grabbed my, I, th- I think it was my blankie, and I was like a little kid, I think I was like five or six, and he was p- trying to get it away from me, and I held on to it, and he dragged me up the sidewalk, and my t-shirt came up over my chest, and my pants came down over the tops of my thighs, and my whole front was, you know when you get those kid scabs that are like, the, the they feel like brick, because they're so thick and hard? 
I had one of those, but it was my stomach. Oh, <laughs> wow. I vividly remember these. Like, yeah. May I propose, though? What? Props to you for not letting go of what is rightfully yours and fighting for what you believe in. Never letting go of that blanket. That, at the end of the day, those battle wounds, I think, show a lot of bravery. I was tenacious. Thank you. Thank you. I was not letting go of it, and I also was not going to listen to Jason Auchinleck when he told me not to touch his bike or he punched me in the face, and I touched it, and boy, howdy, he punched me, <laughs> and then I touched it again, <laughs> Yeah, and he blacked my other eye. So uh, I don't even know how we got on all of this. but That's um, unbelievable. Yeah, Valentine's and uh, school tenacious. were. Yeah. yeah, I was pretty tenacious. What we did in our Valentine's, we never made envelopes that we hung on the desk. I, I'm picturing like glitter and stickers and crayons and mm -hmm. colors. We took shoeboxes. And you got to make the shoebox whatever you wanted. Some people wrapped it in paper and colored on it. I wrapped mine in aluminum foil and then put um, aluminum foil wings on each side and made like a plane out of my shoebox. Like you could you could express your shoebox Valentine's Day love and then that was like a fun thing to have on your desk all day. Nice. Like and then a little was bit like of a identity. little slot in the top yeah. where people would push Valentine's. And then everyone gave everyone a Valentine is what you're saying? Um, I don't know about that. So if like you're in a class of 30, you bring 30 Valentines and you give one to each of your classmates? I think that my parents did that. Well, I don't know if that was like um, standard, but I do remember having to sign something to everyone and going down the list, you know, and writing everybody's name on each one. And, you know, you sneak a lot of like honesty into the ones you actually care about and the oh, other sure. ones you're just like um you know <laughs> happy happy v like you do v day because sure. you don't really mean it oh i don't want to write the whole thing out yeah, yeah well yeah. this tracks because your mom sent me a valentine wait really i opened i just checked my mail when we left and yeah. i didn't get it <laughs> <laughs> your mom sent me a valentine it was so nice like after hanging oh out with God. your family at christmas i feel like i know them a little bit now and it was just like so kind i it was the only valentine that i got in the mail um well and natasha's too so the yeah i opened it was a red envelope and i opened it up and it was a sparkly card with hearts and it said happy valentine's day and it was signed from your mom and your whole family in st louis including riley the dog and uh it was just so sweet and thank you wendy it really made me feel good and i also spoke to my mom today which i don't do all that often so it felt very like yeah my heart my heart felt full today that's awesome chatting with some fam that's awesome yeah it was real nice <laughs> I'm sorry, your mom. I bet she sent it to you and it just hasn't arrived yet. Maybe your mail didn't come yet. You know my mail comes at weird hours. My mailman probably had that thing in my mailbox at like 4 o'clock this morning. <laughs> I know you're trying to help. <laughs> she didn't send me one and didn't and not you one. Hey, man, when it rains, it pours. And I don't think, Look, I, I, don't think I got a Valentine's Day from my mom. Well, I will give you a Valentine to make up for it. <laughs> <laughs> I know she sent it. I'm sure it's in the mail. Okay, good. I do. I just like, I do enjoy the fact that you're... My, my, mine is late. Yeah. And yours arrived on time. Well, that time. tracks with your weird week, right? Yeah. Of yeah. All the, of all the, of all the, crazy I, I can't scroll. keep, I can't keep bringing up the weird week if I'm not going to talk about it. So can we just drop the weird week? Is that okay? Because I feel like the more sure. I bring it up, the more people are going to be like, just say it or don't say it. And so I'd rather not say okay. it. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, because it's just, it's all too much. Got um, it. So. With that being said, I did also want to do one more plug sure. while we're at it. Um, friend of the show, friend in real life, Brian Wool. Mm -hmm. um, he and Lou Berger, which is a handful of guys from Try Guys, um, they sold out. They sold out their off Broadway play. They're in New York the next six weeks. Brian Wool is opening for them, and the whole thing sold out before they even flew to New York. So That's for the amazing. next six weeks, they're off. Um, Brian Wool is performing off Broadway, and before he's off Broadway, he and his amazing wife Alyssa are uh, resetting in Mexico before wow. the, they part ways for a month and a half so I just want to shout out Brian and everyone on Lou Burger as well um, because it's just so exciting to like write something and then have it be Huge. picked off off Broadway and then sell out the entire run before you even open that's fantastic I w hope I can get to New York to see it but if I don't I hope they get picked up an extended run and they go on tour and also can I just say on pod that uh, Brian's wife Alyssa is a peach Mm -hmm. she's like a, the, a an exemplary sweet she I, I saw her i only met her that once uh, at their wedding yes yeah <laughs> and then i uh, saw her when they came to your show and my, brian was on your lineup at the comedy store and she was so just like radiated warmth and and she's just lovely so when all of yeah, us went to fan. see fred durst in a jazz club Ooh. which is a fun sentence to say um, afterwards, we all went back and smoked at their place, and she has all this cool taxidermy. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just like smoking joints. Wrestling is on TV, and she's showing me all of these like 
um, butterflies cool. in jars and birds that are taxidermy. Just that. a cool ass couple, a cool ass person. I okay. yeah. So look, it's a V Day episode. I'm gonna shout out some love. You know what I mean? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and not talk about the weird week. Oh, well, <laughs> I couldn't let you get away with it, Mike. I know. Um, what else do we got to get through here? We got a couple of yeah products to talk about. Are we going to talk about this cannabis lube that you're opening up? I've never used a vibrator on my taint before. Okay. Um, but I guess I could try it. I don't know what it's going to do for your taint. Well, isn't that like a? It's like isn't the taint? Um, the the taint is like a drawbridge to the perineum. The right? taint is your perineum. Uh, no, what's inside? What's inside the inside what? tap? The prostate? It, the prostate. Yeah, I guess. Okay, so the pereni- the taint is a drawbridge to the prostate. Okay. Yeah, and I don't know if I'm there yet. <laughs> Good to know. I don't know if I'm there yet. Okay. But um, Lavinia sent me this Valentine's Day box, and in it is um, white Ooh. chocolate. A little bit of chocolate for V-Day. Gelato live resin white chocolate cereal bar. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, that looks good. And some lip balm, which I'll never use. I'll because, use it. Hand oh, over. okay. Then that's yours. Thank you. Um, I'll never use. I don't like sunglasses touching my ears. Yeah. And I don't like uh, chapstick or lip balm being on my lips. So you're just blind with dry lips. <laughs> <laughs> Is he a catch? He's oh, sun- no, no, no. Sun blinded with flaky lips. Mike Glazer. <laughs> Ladies, get at him. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a big old smooch with those big flaky lips. Mm, my lips are soft for anyone who's you know interested in knowing what my pucker is like. It's sweet and supple. Wow. All right. We really are the uh, oh, Abbott and Costello <laughs> cannabis comedy. Uh-huh. Um, do you want to crack open this um, yeah. lube and see how it feels? I do. Okay. And then they sent this thing. Also, we are on YouTube, everyone. Will you please go to our YouTube? Yeah. Subscribe. Um, watch the videos. Uh, honestly, it'd be great if we could get our YouTube subscriber up and our TikTok up. Uh, our TikTok is at Mike and Mary Jane, and our yes. YouTube, I think, is at Weed and Grub. Um, if we can get those numbers super fucking high, that would be yeah. a really big deal. And you can see us at Petty Cash Studios, and today we're recording in front of this beautiful... Oh, did you just turn on that vibrator? I was yeah, just going to say... <laughs> We're recording in front of this beautiful wall of vegetation and foliage, which is actually the backdrop for our friend Liz's podcast, Send Us Flowers. Check out that pod. She does like product reviews and talks to people in the cannabis industry, largely women um, who are doing like great work in the in the cannabis, cannabis space. So. Your episode was great. Yeah, thank you. I had a you really, really good time You really need lube to open that lube, huh? I can't open this goddamn lube because it's like childproof packaging, which makes sense. But anyway, I'm just going to hold it up. Uh, oh, hi. It's great. I'll crack into it later with um, hammer and tongs. <laughs> Like you're in the bedroom and everything just. is like really getting ready and it's like yep. we'd like that like little extra slipperiness and then, and then you just hear the drag of an anvil and then you see a spark. What is she? Oh, she's opening the packaging. Uh huh. It was. Isn't there that movie with the um, soldering where it's a woman who solders and flash she ha- dance? Flash dance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's you in a flash dance spark mask. Yeah, she's a hot ass welder. Jennifer Beals. Jennifer Beals. Great movie. Um, and then this little um thumb sized vibrator. Okay, that's I- the size of whose thumb? That's a giant thumb. Shag- Thumb. Yeah, that's a pretty big thumb. <laughs> um, did you just turn it on? Hold it down. Oh. Oh. That's intimidating. That feels like it would really work. Oh, yeah, that's got some good. I, If you're not going to use this, I would take. Oh, wow, I just turned it up. Okay. I well, Mary Jane, off. happy Valentine's and... Day from me. <laughs> I've achieved liftoff. Oh, my God, it's got like five settings. I can't turn it off. This is very embarrassing. Your cheeks are so flush. I need to turn it off. How do I turn it off? Okay. I'm going to um, have a good time with that if you'll let me experiment. <laughs> Your lips just shook a little bit, and, and I immediately saw like an OnlyFans called Mary <laughs> Jane. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a very good time. What a great package. For you. Well, thank you for You're sharing. You're welcome. Um, yeah, I'll certainly. I don't know why dudes aren't I'll into vibrators. That. Well, you know, it's... I mean, I'm sure there are things you can do as a man with a vibrator. Totally. But for women, the clitoral stimulation is really key to us coming. Mm. Whereas for a dude, it's really more about the the, the friction, the, like the squeeze and tug, right? Oh, yeah. On the shaft and, and on the tip. Right. Totally. Yes. Yeah. But but then <laughs> it, the prostate makes you have harder orgasms if it's also a part of the mix. Okay. Um, I'm talking from American Pie experience only. Okay. I'm only talking from Stifler. Okay. Um, experience. I've never, I've never had a um, 
uh, I've never had that type of orgasm before. Okay. And so I don't know if it's true or not, but I, I assume it's true because like science writes about it. Sure. Well, and then, you, and you have the thing that can help you figure it out. Right no, there this will get vibrate. lost. Are you out of your mind? Oh yeah, that's true. You shouldn't put up. No, don't put that up. No, your this is the kind of thing that then you have an X-ray in the ER. Oh my god! And you have to always, explain it every year. There's a list of the craziest things the doctors found in someone's butt, and it's always like a Hot Wheels car or like you know, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, an entire butternut squash or whatever. <laughs> It's just crazy. Well, that's great. Congratulations wow. on getting a package full of sex stuff. Yeah, thank you so much Hot. to um, KMA Agency for all of nice. it. Nice. Uh, but again, this is a vibrator for you. This is it's too dangerous for me to have this. Also, um, I can't. My my balls are so sensitive that I can't even. I used to. Speaking of being in elementary school, you know the spinny carousel thing that you would play in recess mm -hmm. or the seesaw yep. I could never do them because they made my balls hurt too much oh my goodness like the up and down motion like a roller coaster mm -hmm. it makes my it just makes my balls like roll into my Adam's apple and I can't do it and so okay. I imagine that that vibrator is gonna make my fucking clangers bang too hard and okay. so so I will uh, confiscate it yeah I'll take, take it that away and um, enjoy the clang banging by myself <laughs> 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 it's like what construction is she doing every hour in on her, the hour <laughs> on the hour well, uh, <laughs> watching law and order <laughs> and doing construction um speaking of like sexy things in love and good times can we talk about our show at sf sketch fest a little bit and boy, get into oh boy some of the things that happened you guys so we actually did get a recording of the whole show and we are going to drop it i think on youtube but it's like it's like watching theater on video. It's like you, you can never capture the sort of like experience of being in the theater. It was truly, it was a, we hotboxed the venue. Uh, someone wrote on Instagram that it was low-key the wildest show at SF Sketch Fest because, you know, Sumo Snacks came through and gave us so many um, treats and prizes to give away. 100 milligram bags of edibles to give to the crowd. All of the different flavors with the Snoop Snazzlos and the spicy Snazzlos and the classic cheese and just go check out Sumo Snacks. They're great. And they hooked us up with a bunch of product to share with our friends and and we had incredible guests, Katrina Davis, Vanessa Gonzalez, and Jordan Morris, who were so fucking funny. And the show was just great. We played games, and it, it was such a good time. And then, like, to top it all off, the cherry on the motherfucking Sunday, we had a proposal. Unreal. A marriage proposal on stage that we couldn't have planned better for how it went off because when we post this picture on Instagram, you can see Katrina's face, yeah, Jordan's face, my <laughs> face, your face, and Vanessa has one of those like kazoo blowers in uh -huh. her mouth, and everyone is <laughs> gobsmacked, and yeah. and rightfully so because I, the way it rolled out, it, it was unbelievable. It um, was crazy. Wow. We were playing games, so like every guest would sort of do a bit of stand up, and then we would chat with them, and then we would play a game where they would play for the audience. An so, interactive game that had to do with one of the senses, because when you're stoned, yeah. it's very fun to touch, taste, smell, see, and hear. And uh, yeah, it was it was like a great time. We came up with some really goofy games. We had like, what the fuck is that sound? Or you know, identifying like a zoomed in detail from a classic stoner movie. And we were doing the one that was it was after what's that sound, which we had just played for the audience and Katrina won the game and she was playing for someone in the audience who came up on stage. And this lovely gal comes up on stage. She accepts her prize of Snazzlows. And then she says, and another thing, turns around, whips a ring out and says to her girlfriend who's in the second row, Jenny, will you marry me? Holy macaroni. Holy macaroni Holy in a pot. Holy macaroni. And then Jordan was like, what would you have done if you hadn't won? And she didn't even have an answer. It was like she just knew that she was going to get up on stage somehow. And she did. She manifested that shit. She won the game. And then she sat down. We interviewed her for a few minutes. We'll Allie. To, Allie is her name. We'll drop that uh, some of that um, short little chat with Allie on our on our shorts and YouTubes and Instagram so you can see her and how lovely she is. And she was like, I just love the pod. And I was so excited to come to the live show. And uh, this is where I wanted to do it. So we had a marriage proposal. The craziest part for me leaving the show after hanging out with Allie and Jen um, was – realizing that we weren't the main characters at that show yeah. like we were all in Allie and Jen's world that night like we thought that we were the conductors of ceremony we thought that we were the ones performing for everyone else but really Allie's over there pulling the st <laughs> psychic strings the entire time getting selected by Katrina getting up on stage winning and proposing and now they're fiancés mm -hmm. and like the idea that like we were um we were uh what's that called? co-stars 
in, totally. in in their moment it yep. is so fantastic we were we were the backdrop for their for that for that moment of their lives and i couldn't be happier or more proud or grateful like truly yes thank you so much for for choosing our show to make that fucking happen um it was great it was unbelievable and um they they did say yes by the way and yes. i'm so sorry i'm blanking on their other friends jenny, name. jenny but oh, no victoria vivian 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 or Victoria? A cool V name. A very cool V name. My apologies for, um, one, not getting out my phone because if I look at my phone, um, the podcast is over. <laughs> and, and Off the rails. And, uh, and um, the really fun thing, too, that I remember from that moment was as Ali is coming up on stage, she's climbing over their friend and mm-hmm. also hands her this really cool, bright, turquoise, disposable polaroid camera mm-hmm. and i was like oh she wants to get her picture on stage winning and then all of a sudden when she turns around and proposes right up there boom gets the polaroid and i was like such oh this good... whole thing was planned to a t such a good friend just good vibes all around it was fucking great i mean honestly yeah the, we went to a party later that night a very cool like industry party that we somehow managed to get into the dude from mythbusters adam savage it was awesome and um so many cool people there had a great time just like being in that workshop and looking at all of the cool stuff from Mythbusters no, too. No, 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 no. This is where I'm coming in hot. What? Too many people were crowded around the pizza. I couldn't get a slice. Oh, well, that's your problem there. I couldn't get a slice. You were hungry, Mike. I was very hungry. Yeah. When when you're in a when you're in a party with highfalutin folks, maybe you don't want to eat. Maybe you're like a little nervous to like wolf down a couple slices. Uh huh. But at one point, man, between all of the weed and the whiskey, it was it was time to get some crust in my mouth. Mm-hmm. And by then, it was all gone. Oh, and so man. you know, I I I um, even even the creme de la creme of the Sketchfest community are pizza hogs. Wow. And I'm saying it here. Well, I had a great time because I hung out with um just Katrina and like just yucked it up and uh in a true starstruck moment I met Jason Ritter whoa and um, whoa. yeah and you I was, are a massive fan of his father as well massive massive fan of John Ritter's work and so to be introduced to Jason at this party and just chit chat with him and he was like you know what were you doing and he'd been there doing a play re- or a reading of a new pilot um or a tv show and I was like, oh, I have a podcast. It's called Weed and Grub. And then people around were like, oh, my God, we heard about that show today. Didn't you have a proposal on stage? And I was like, yo, I'm at the coolest party at SF Sketch Fest with all of these amazing people. And they low-key have heard of our podcast because of like the show that we had today. That felt really fun and great. So um, Jenny and Allie, you... Um, you blew us up in a in a real way. Even like I, you know, there were so many fun elements of the show. But like I said, that was cherry on Sunday. That's so awesome. Mm-hmm. And also, Jason, if you're listening, you're not a pizza hog, buddy. Yeah, uh, I, I'm like no <laughs> one's a pizza hog. I, I I love all of you, and uh-huh. I'm sorry. Mike is a nice guy. Everyone, he's real nice. Can I just say, Jason Ritter is a very fun follow on TikTok. He had a great uh, TikTok about cleaning out his fridge because his wife had been out of town. And he's like, she's coming home. So I got to like clean the house and get everything kind of nice for her. I'm so excited to see her. And he's cleaning out the fridge and he's smelling things before he throws them away to see if he should or not. And it's just classic comedy. He's like smelling arugula and then doing like, Bleh, you know, <laughs> it's great. It's real fun. He's That's a good great. time. So follow him on uh, on all the things. Wait, we cannot. Not like he needs my fucking help, but, you know. We cannot forget the other part of Sketchfest. Oh, all there the, might be a cherry parts. on top, but there is a marmalade oh. swirl all a, over the ice cream. Yes, there's a marmalade base. There's a marmalade Stuart, base. Stuart, our friend Stuart, we have been in contact, I feel like, from early on when we started this podcast. We started corresponding with Stuart, and Stuart was like, I think he got in touch maybe about something that we talked about that was Scottish initially, because he's Scottish. Yeah, well, the the things that come to mind are, um, we were talking about kilts and crests. hmm and we were talking about oh, Iron Brew. We were talking about tartans. And tartans. Maybe he got about, yeah. So he, a long time ago, sent us a beautiful care package of Iron Brew and his homemade marmalade. And he also sent us a, um, a candy, and I can't remember what it was called, but it was like kind of like a homemade fudge. Um, oh, Stuart, I'm so sorry. I'm forgetting what that's called. But it's just like. And been... I don't remember because I don't think I actually got any Mary Jane. Well, you well, did. well. She's taken my vibrator. Yeah, She's taken my fudge. Just send it all to me, guys. <laughs> She's <laughs> taken my mom's I'm valentines. I'm here to receive the valentines, the vibrators, and all the marmalade. <laughs> but it, so Stuart came to our live show and brought us Iron Brew and Marmalade. And we got to say hey in person. And it was such a cool and surreal moment to just meet someone who we've truly been in touch with for years now years it was so great because uh the best part about like meeting people who i'm so excited to meet 
is at first you don't want to be the weird person and be like, Stuart. And then you, somebody turns around and you're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And so he did that beautiful move that I wish everyone would do where he just came up and goes, hey, Mike, I'm Stuart. Mm -hmm. Like all the initiative in the world, which put all my defenses down and it felt so great because then I can just like give him a big hug and mm -hmm. mean it. And there's no tiptoeing about who's who or what's your name and da 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 da. And then he just pulled a bunch of marmalade out of his bag. And we have some here. I want to try it on pod because it's we like- We have to. We got to talk about how freaking delicious it is it's um we each got a giant mason jar and thank you mike for smuggling this through airport security i feel like as we were going through security we were a little concerned that we were going to get flagged but that tsa agent was like having a day and so they just didn't even notice that you had what could have been liquid explosives in your sneakers <laughs> it did look like i mean look this is either a bunch of dabs yeah, in a jar that looks like some major fucking hash oil with a bunch of like <laughs> chunks in it yeah but it's yeah yo that tsa agent it was so funny because as soon as we put our bags down there was like an emergency and they all ran away and it just seemed like our bags went through the x-ray machine without anyone i know someone was there but it truly felt like they were like you guys are pre-check get out of here it definitely yeah it felt so. it felt a little crazy it was um so this is orange Orange marmalade. This is cream corner officially, right? Yes, this we is can our say this is our cream corner. corner. Okay. This delicious marmalade, which I think Stuart told us he makes with um, trees, maybe from mm. around. Like I think these are foraged fruits, like not bought. You can really see maybe the I'm rind. You can see the rind. It's a really like a classic, classic marmalade. Okay. Mm. Oh my god, it just makes my heart sing. You know? Yeah. It's Seriously. like a truly magical thing, homemade. You can taste like the perfect, perfect balance of it's, it's tart and sweet in the most wonderful way. And the, the rinds are like soft, so it gives a little bit of texture. But like you're candy, not, though. You're not They're biting like, into them that when then yeah. like it's not resistant. Oh, my God. Mm. Thank you, Stuart. Sorry, everyone's having to listen to us eat, but we had to try it on pod. Mm. I love it. Most marmalade. I've only had Stuart's homemade marmalade. And outside of that, it's always been like a Smucker's or some kind of preserve. Mm -hmm. And I've always kind of had to buy like either low sugar or something for that because it just tastes insane to me. Mm. This is so perfectly balanced, like you said, because it doesn't have whatever those jars of factory have in them. Like this like is corn like syrup and corn stuff. Corn syrup. Probably. Yeah, yeah, probably. I'm That's wondering so good. too if this would um, be Hi, good with like uh, almond butter and like a marmalade and almond butter sandwich, like kind of, you know, PB&J style situation. Well, Mary Jane, if you're sitting down, I can reveal to you. What? Please don't get mad. Uh-oh. Um, I cracked this jar earlier. Yeah. And I made a pe smooth peanut butter and marmalade tortilla wrap. <sighs> Fuck this, man. You out? Yeah, I'm, I'm out of here. It's been nice. It's been nice. It's been a good time, but how how could you? You had a sandwich I didn't know about? I, 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 I snuck in a sandwich without letting you that's know. That's grounds for, I don't even know. No, that's <laughs> great. <laughs> I wondered why the jar was like. No, I was looking out and I was like, God, she's on her way. I know she's picking me up. I better hurry over. and hide this. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, I'm going to try. <laughs> I forgot about the the old days of this podcast when you um you were threatening to put a nest in my fridge in case yeah. I had leftovers that you didn't know about. I need to, I need to know what snacks are at your house at all times. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's not controlling. <laughs> it's like, not a controlling move at all if if we were to like <laughs> pitch something to stephen king it's like it's like misery but it's mostly about snacks it's just about what food mike has in his fridge and that's yeah and she's in control <laughs> and he likes you it. dirty bird <laughs> um i had a f for the first time in many years i you know can't even remember the last time i had a, a peanut butter style sandwich because I can't have the peanuts but I went on a hike with our friend Lauren and she at the top of the mountain whipped out a almond butter and jam sandwich was so satisfying after hiking to the tippity top of are you giving me coffee if you need a sip no I'm good thank okay. you um yeah it was great because uh I I had fucked up on the snacks normally my snack game is strong with the hiking mm -hmm. and I'd really blown it that day and I only had like one um, chomp beef stick from Trader Joe's and like some almonds and then she whipped out these almond butter and jelly sandwiches and bags of Cheez-Its and if she weren't married I would have proposed right then and there <laughs> <laughs> fucking great that's awesome yeah. um this marmalade also makes me reminisce about my mom's cooking oh. one of her like one of her best dishes that she made is apricot chicken Ooh. have you ever heard of that before yeah sure I think so it's like it's it's almost um I, I'm going to misremember it. Um, excuse me. Um, but it's like uh, we were a chicken breast family. Okay. 
I'll just get that out of the way right now. Sure. Yeah. You know, like I get it. A Midwest chicken breast family. Mm -hmm. A chicken thigh never crossed our plates. Dang. Um, I was raised thinking that they were disgusting and gamey. Whoa. And really like un untasty. How far you've come. How far I've come. So we were a chicken breast family. Okay. Um, but what she would do, I think, was take like a jar of Smucker's apricot jam and cover the chicken in it and then throw it in the oven and it would get this crystally, gooey, melty... Yeah. kind of glaze over the chicken and that would be the seasoning would be that apricot jam over it wild um and well it tasted amazing yeah uh, w uh if i were to eat it now i might punch that up a bit because you know sure uh, but uh for the time and for the money we had apricot chicken was a real treat wow i got it yeah like candy chicken candy chicken totally <laughs> amazing also um I, I, I might be making the wrong fish move with this but I think like jams and fish go really well together. Like no, like a trout. Nope. A no. Sar I'm not putting marmalade on my trout. I'm not. No. Grr. No. <laughs> Citrus goes with fish. Great, but not. I don't want marmalade. Not you don't sweet. think like a sweet marmalade would go with a fish? You know what? There's uh, scallops maybe with like a little quince paste. I can see that because like the that. sweetness of the, the sweetness scallop. The sweetness of the scallop. Yeah, there used to be. I worked at a restaurant that had a dish that was delicious unfortunately it was foie gras which i don't think i can ever eat again i'm you know knowing what it is but i'm so Slide glad i've it had my it way. it's delicious and it was foie gras with scallops and i think there was like a maybe a sweet citrus involved as well so i mean okay but i'm not putting marmalade on my trout <laughs> <laughs> the euphemisms i am not doing it <laughs> you hear me um also shout out to uh tomas who came through for us at the show um, and Reggie, who sent Tomas our way, Oakland Haifei, if you're not following Oakland Haifei, follow them. They are doing the fucking coolest work for the community with psychedelics in Oakland. And like the group of people that they have assembled as friends and community organizers and educators, like they're just every one of them is stellar and um, follow them and like fuck with all their events and you know they have the psychedelic conference that we went to and yeah if anybody is in san francisco who went to our live show and is listening to this app because it's after the live show um check out oakland hyphae on instagram and go to their events in oakland dc san francisco yeah all over the yeah, place yeah yeah especially if you're in the mushroom if you're if you're interested in the mushroom game it's um fascinating it's, it's the best place to be and i've learned the most from those educators like they're just really there's a um someone who i follow on instagram who was at that event called Myco symbiote i think is how and his name is william brown i believe and he's just doing like crazy cool mushroom education about like foraging and growing and like it's just it's just really neat it's not like these big psychedelics conferences where it's like a bunch of like talking heads on stage talking about like investing in the psychedelic space it's like people who are like on the ground organizing and growing and foraging and doing nature walks and like about how psychedelics and psilocybin specifically are for healing in the community um they're great i love them can i get to something personal about that sure uh how was round two of ketamine Oh, my healing with psychedelics journey is um, really in an interesting place. Um, yeah, I, again, I kind of want to keep it personal until I've sort of like done all of the sessions. I have a total of four sessions and I'm halfway through now. But again, thank you for being my trusted ally. And this time around, so I did it at, for anyone who's listened to the pod from a couple of weeks ago, I had done my first session and had a really interesting time and especially kind of like learning about how doing it in this very specific setting with like um, like an uh, audio kind of landscape and an eye mask and having fasted before in this like intentional sort of medical way, um, I'm, I'm really learning a lot because I've always used psychedelics for healing in my own way, in my own kind of intuitive way. And I've so, always used it for partying. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I've certainly done that as well. I've done my fair share of that. So this was really great. Round two, I think I was like, excuse me, I was wondering if the, uh, it was going to be I was sort of trying not to measure it against round one while it was happening. That makes sense. You know, sort of like using the, because the, the first time was very, very intense and, and very illuminating. And when I went into round two, I was like, I hope it's the same. Then I was like, let go of that. You've got to let go of literally every expectation because you will trap yourself in sort of a, a, a place where you're not going to be able to get past that. And so I really spent the whole time letting go and a totally other time bubbled up and new things that I needed to know about. So it was very cool and I'm excited to carry on and you know again thank you for like coming and hanging out with my animals while I did it it really means a lot to have a trusted ally it's cool that you asked me um thank you for sharing that yeah. I, I I want to just continue to market 
as these yeah. episodes go on and you continue through continue the process. To, yeah, and then I think, you know, when it's all over, like I definitely am interested in writing about my experience with it and letting no pe- letting people know. I was talking to one of my very, very good friends about my first experience and um, she was saying that she wishes sh- she were able to do it because she needs the kind of experience that I was telling her about. Um, but she didn't feel like she was able to for certain reasons. She was like, maybe I just need to talk to you more about it and feel like I'm, I'm more... Um, like this could be for me because she basically she's just really nervous about taking a powerful psychedelic yeah. because she doesn't mess with anything. She's 100 percent sober. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to sort of like do my part in, in talking about it as someone who, um, yeah, is just on that journey. The medical journey um, hopefully gives a lot of people a alternative route to yeah. a lot of pills that I was um, almost prescribed recently. Ah. And I was like, no, nah, I'm good on all that shit. But thank you. Yeah. But no, thank you. You know, so um, I completely understand the fear of the unknown when it comes to something like a huge dose of ketamine. Right. I also would say I have no interest in opiates, mm-hmm. opioids, however you say it, mm-hmm. uh, ever. So right. that's my big fear. Like I will gobble up the ketamine and ask you to be my ally way well, before but I do the other things. they're for very different things. I'm imagining that you not were offered. To, to oh, me, yes. No, but they're for physical pain. I know, I know. About, but right? to me, the fear that that person might be feeling is, oh, is I see. For you're, me, the you're idea of, of like the... a pharmaceutical. I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, I just realized that my mouth is feeling kind of dry, so I'm going to pop one of these because we were sent these um, moisturi- moisturizing tablets. If you were listening to the podcast for the last few weeks, we had an ad for these guys. They're called Xylodent, and they're like vegan, kosher, all natural um, tablets that help you with your dry mouth. I just realized my mouth is kind of dry, so I'm going to try one on pod. And... Oh, that's wild. You wet? <laughs> It's like an ocean wave just smacked me in the face. That's really good. These are wintergreen. They're naturally flavored, and it freshens your breath too. So it's like a breath mint, but one that actually activates your saliva glands. Mm. And now I'm now I'm now I'm like I'm not drooling, but <laughs> could you That's gleek? Great. Could you gleek after a, some xylodent? What's a gleek? A gleek is I could never do it, mm. but it's when you can like kind of squirt. Oh, I know. Spit you, out of you, your mouth almost like a snake venom. Because you lift your tongue and then it shoots out from underneath your tongue. Yeah. Probably, but I'm not going to try. I'm going to sip a little water because now I have so much saliva that I actually need to wash it down. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> what is it? Like xylodent.co? Mm. Mm-hmm. It's at xylodent.co and you can use our code. Um, I think weed and grub. Weed and grub. We'll, well, we'll put it in the show notes. And um, yeah, thank you guys. This has been really like a cool little collaboration i'm always excited when someone is wants to advertise on our podcast and then they send us stuff to try and i'm gonna try right now because it's delicious there we go nice silent that's a nice thing to us, keep guys. in your car too mm-hmm. you know like i've been driving around a lot just drinking starbucks coffees oh yeah and i'm not you know i mean like i've brushed my teeth in some gas stations recently and spit into the Ew. fucking alley life on the road is a comic yo man so <laughs> having something like that would actually be a real nice thing to have yeah i think it's it's yeah it's not just for cotton mouth it would definitely be good for like before a job interview when you get all nervous or whatever you know oh my gosh when yeah, yeah when your mouth goes dry when you're like ah, ah, what am i gonna say ah, ah. You should give it to Bobo, your cat. <laughs> oh, my God, Bobo. Maybe that'll help him with some hairballs. Listen, I woke up this morning, and Bobo was – he was doing that cat yowl thing, you know, where they're like, whoa, like it's something's wrong. Mm-hmm. It's not just hungry. And I couldn't figure out what's going on. This fucking cat is 20 years old. Like, he's got so many issues. I'm never sure which one it is. He had food. He, he looked fine. He didn't look to be in pain or anything. And then finally I figured out that he was just cold. He had old man bones. He had old man bones, and it's a little chilly for L.A., basically. I hadn't turned the heat on, and I was all tucked up, all warm in bed, but I wasn't letting him under the covers because, you know, sometimes poop falls out of his butt, and that's just disgusting. And he was just cold. <laughs> so I turned on the heat for him, and now Bobo's snoozing in a toasty living room. But I was thinking about that uh, that Korean movie, Old Boy. Uh-huh. I was like, we should do a remake with Bobo as the start and call it Cold Boy. <laughs> 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 or at least do like a, a fake trailer for it of like you know of him like as the the dude the vengeance guy yeah he's like seeking revenge he's like going under the covers like it's the tunnel and he's <laughs> yeah. he's he's the old guy with the claws yeah. he's like ready to strike cold boy <laughs> <laughs> bobo is cold boy anyway yeah that was how i woke up mm. not great 
Do you want to get to the news or should I talk Hawaii? Where do you want to go next? Well, we have to wrap pretty soon. So let's do the news real quick. Okay. And Because it's um, a crazy news story. It's a crazy story. Um, I think I initially saw it reported in Gondrepreneur, but it's kind of all over the place. It's that Raw Rolling Papers was sued by another company called Republic Brands who um, basically took it all the way to a federal court and has forced Raw and HBI International, the parent company, to stop using a ton of their marketing techniques, including saying that their papers are made in a certain town in Spain. They're organic. That they're organic, that they're refined, that they're you know made from pure hemp, that the owner of Raw... Um, has Invented. Been Josh... Uh, Kesselman, I believe. Sorry uh, to step on his name. Please say it again so people don't fuck no, with it. No, it's all right. I mean, you know, that he invented the cone. And I think the weirdest of all the things was that there was supposedly a charity that Raw was donating to. And evidently the charity didn't exist. So it was a lot of fallacy to market a product. And let it, you know, it, it is worth noting that it was a competitor that took this to court and pushed this all the way through. So obviously they are benefiting from it. So I don't think it's a good guy, bad guy situation necessarily. I think it's obviously some fucking sharky business as well. But uh, they were able to prove all of this, you know, all of these things that they were using for marketing were not true. And they've basically been ordered to, Raw has been ordered to cease and desist using any of those um, sayings or, or tactics to market their products, which is wild. Yeah, I understand that it is a business move for Republic to kind of take take the lead yeah because raw has been on top for so long Mm -hmm. but also raw fucking lied they lied about everything and they lied and took people's money and so i understand that there is a competition there but i also think you're a fucking liar and this is we're trying to get people out of prison we are trying to make something federally legal we are trying to get medical like in ways that when i was in hawaii the medical game there is out of control it is um not great. Yeah, and let's so, get like, into Hawaii a I'll little get to, bit. I'll yeah. get into it in a second, but I just want to say like, yo, uh, like I don't. There is no, I there is no area for me that has a defense for Raw, and I'm not sure, sure why. I should defend them or I haven't heard anyone defend them either. So, right. you yeah. know, at I the mean, end the one, of the day, the one point that I keep hearing made is that it was a competitor. It was Republic brands that, you know, filed this lawsuit and we should pay attention to that as well. But I mean, I just looked him up. I just Googled him really quickly and his net worth is, uh, this was in 2022. His net worth was an estimated $48 million. So we don't need to be feeling sorry for this guy. No. And, also, um, if that's a competitor that it took, that's because they had the, uh, money behind it mm-hmm. it was a business move maybe but also like you know it's I, it it wouldn't have been anyone else who would have been able to do that and take it all the way to federal court i don't think yeah no one else would have cared right right so yeah i don't know if you um don't want to fuck with raw anymore because of that there are so many good brands out there the competitor obviously republic brands would love you to buy any of their products but there are amazing products that are small and community owned i love a paper that's called isaac's or zach's rolling papers i'll put a link in the show notes um they're like a a small company started by like a young entrepreneur on the east coast there's i saw somewhere on instagram someone just shouting out all of the different papers that you can buy that don't support any massive corporations so i don't know do a little digging around and maybe you know buy some Buy local. Buy local, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's hear about Hawaii, Mike. What was your what was the time like? It was amazing. I brought uh the bag just to show. Shout out to Allie, who uh flew me out there for Hawaiian Island Cannabis Cup, the very wow. first ever. Um, congratulations to all of you. Um I'll just go through it very quickly. Yeah. Check out all the weed in here. Let me see. Oh my goodness, the bounty. <gasps> wow. That's awesome. So I learned a lot. There was a lot of great, and there were some things that were just so out of our control that I would really love to go back to Hawaii to do a to do my job. Um, so it was the first cup. They had sold like hundreds of tickets. It was going to be outdoors on this farm. Yeah. Um, there was like a hundred vendors, poke, drinks, um, chamoy, rolled fruit, like just great stuff, great music, fire dancers. I was going to do stand-up comedy. And the rain wouldn't stop. I had no idea. I thought if you were surrounded by the ocean, then all the water was below. I didn't know that the water would also come from the sky. (laughs) I had no clue how uh, rainy Hawaii is. Islands are often very rainy, especially the tropics. No clue. Yeah. Because it's like sunny and sweet and the sun is always out. So I really assumed that. um, You thought it was going to be more like L.A. weather? I really did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, um, I'm just going to be straightforward. I didn't get to do stand up. Uh, everything got rained out. Um, it's really important to me to go back, especially mm. because 
while I was there, Allie, who's the one who contacted me and made this all possible, thank you, Allie, um, we did get to spend a lot of time smoking, and I was learning a lot about how medical is done. I met a lot of medical patients there. There's a lot of vets who live in Hawaii. Um, uh, it's, it's wild how important this plant is to all of these people, and I don't see enough, especially living here in L.A., of that kind of... Uh, I guess I'll say boots on the ground, mm. kind of going into where cannabis is needed most and used by people to really stay alive. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was um, so, 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 I feel very fortunate to have connected with all of them. Um, I, I, I asked Allie if I could share a little bit of her story and everything she said, and she said that's no problem. So thank you, Allie, um, because she has a disease called Steven Johnson's disease. And I looked it up just to double check what she was saying with what I was reading. And it is heinous. And she smokes a half ounce to an ounce a day. Wow. Um, because if you want to look up Stephen Johnson's disease, uh, I recommend reading it, Googling the images. Um, you know, I'll give a little warning on. But essentially, she was on all of this medication prescribed by a doctor. And all of it was mixing together. And it was a cocktail that was having disastrous results. And that gave her Stephen Johnson's disease, which starts as irritation and rashes on your body and then turns into blisters and then your skin falls off mm. and she couldn't get a hold of it. And it happened to her three times. She ended up in the ER three times with her skin falling off mm -mm. and she has stomach issues. And all of this is to say now um, the disease is under control. I don't know if you can be in remission. I'm not sure how any of that works, but weed is a magical plant for her and so mm -hmm. many others. And so um, she straddles that line between um, working that corporate job for this cannabis farm and doing marketing and doing all of those things, but also being a part of this deeply connected medical community in Hawaii that is fighting to get the Hawaiian government to change how um, in shambles it is. Because I learned everybody in Hawaii on each island, you can't sell between islands, Whoa! which is so crazy to me. So each island has to have its own farms. Okay. Each island has to have its own dispensaries, but there's only three dispensaries allowed per island. Okay. So I was in Honolulu, Oahu, and it took me about an hour and a half to drive from one end to the other from my hotel to there. So three dispensaries, an hour and a half drive across the island. And if you're, if you have cancer or you can't get out of bed, and you have to get to one of these three dispensaries wherever you, they are. And it can only be you who picks it up. It can't be a nurse. And they don't deliver? It can't be a caretaker. There's no delivery allowed. Whoa, that's nuts. It's unbelievable. Whoa. So I'm um, thank you for creating the space for me to kind of go on a bit of a soapbox about how wild it was to be in there, how excited I am to have all of this great flower, how great it was to meet everyone, and also learn that there's some real problems with how the medical policies are being rolled out. And um, we talked a lot about how L.A. is also a disaster, how we're all kind of looking to New York with a lot of hope. But um, the things that they're fighting for is to let someone else pick up your weed for you if you're a medical patient, yeah. like a nurse or a caretaker, to have more dispensaries so that you can support more small businesses, to have a way for these farms to use the surplus of beautiful weed. I'd like to um, I don't know if we can post some pictures on IG of it or not, but every single plant was green. There was no mites on it. There was none of those mm -hmm. things. It was just healthy, outdoor, mm -hmm. bomb weed. And um, Do you know what the home grow situation is? Home grow, I, I'm going to... I don't know the exact amount of plants, but they do have They home have grow. home grow. Okay, yes. well, that's one uh, silver lining, I guess. Totally. To having the medical program. Because like there are some states that have tried to legalize without home grow, and they keep getting shot down because it's the most important thing. You know, if you're a patient, you should be able to grow your own medicine. Yeah, so exactly. that's great to hear that they have home grow. But that's so crazy that they don't allow delivery, and they don't allow a caregiver to pick up your, your cannabis pr prescription for you. That's absolutely nuts. Yeah, at the grow we went to, um, it uses like lava rock and oh, stuff too wow and so it was really cool to like put your hands in the earth yeah. and feel um the the soil of hawaii being used to grow these plants it That's was really cool amazing yeah I, I i'm excited to learn more and go back to hawaii with you i think I'm it's an important thing to put on people's on radars next, yeah, yeah on please. your next trip i would love to come with you because i've never been to hawaii i have a dear friend shout out uh, sarah uh, at Love Rumble, who lives on Oahu, and um, I've always wanted to come visit and learn about the cannabis scene and, and, you know, meet the patients and 
Like the, the original medical programs are the reason that we have legal weed in the first place. And corporate cannabis fucking forgets about that all the time. And I remember, you know, one of the biggest deals for me working cannabis events when I was with High Times and I would go to the cannabis cups were the patients who would show up, so many of them using, you know, walkers or like truly like chronic patients with physical disabilities and the, the cannabis made it possible for them to be even you know like move around and they would come to these events and they were so excited to meet people like Danny Danko or anyone who could like teach them about growing their medicine and they were so like that community is the reason that we have legal weed in the first place and um you know and then when you go to like these fancy fucking cannabis parties where everyone's like there to make their millions off it it's uh forgetting about all those people it is yeah it is so um yeah i i really hope they do a second annual one yeah i hope the sun is out i hope it's beautiful time <laughs> yes. um i hope the mud doesn't come up to anyone's knees mm. and um i just want to say thank you to um everyone and especially Allie, for uh, giving me the opportunity to come to hawaii and i can't wait to come back amazing yeah all right yeah and uh uh oh there was one other thing Oh, the snorkeling is out of control, and oh. I went on a hike and almost died. Anyway, um, <laughs> would you want to get to Buzz of the Week? Let's get to Buzz of the Week because I want to get into the hike where you almost died, but I don't. We're we're kind of out of time. So. Yeah, I almost died. I'm so glad you're okay. Thank you. I'm glad you came back to us, Mike. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate absolutely. That. So, um, do you want to go first or second? Because um, my buds are pretty obvious. Okay, um, I will go first because my bud of the week is our friend Stuart. Yeah. At Stuart Blair on Twitter. Although I just saw that Stuart has moved off of Twitter and was um, post. I didn't even know what the this new platform is. It's called Counter.Social. Oh, I don't know it. I don't. It's one of the alternatives. I'm on Mastodon for anyone who cares. I mean, I, I'm not even on there because I don't know how it works. But so Stuart is now on Counter Social. But if you go to his at Stuart Blair Twitter account, then you can hop on over to his link from there. And Stuart, like man thank you like you've lit up my heart so many times with you know your messages and emails and care packages and then meeting you in person and just like seeing your face in the audience as we were doing our super fun show it was it was just dope so thank you so much for being a bud of of the decade and uh, and and my bud of this week a bud of the decade is right <laughs> an og bud og bud yeah uh my bud of the week this week it's a uh, three pete i'm actually going to take the time that I need to find one of their names. But in the meantime, of course it's Allie. Yeah. Of course it's Jen. And let me find, uh, I While you think look, it's Victoria. This is the couple who got engaged at SF Sketchfest at Weed and Grub Live, and they uh, are just the freaking cutest. Man, I think everyone is cool because they're not on Instagram. I think yeah. that's like the new cool thing to me. I'm blown away because I'm like looking and I'm like, Jen, like her fiance is not even on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess at this point, my butt of the week this week is officially Allie4M Callie, Allie Klein, uh, camp hair, don't care. Allie is A-L-L-I-E, four is the number, and then M Callie, Allie4M Callie. And uh, Allie Klein, congrats to you. Congrats to Jen. Thank you for coming to the show. Yeah. You're another decade bud. Um, yeah, OG you know, bud now. Love is real. Love is in the air. In the in the firmament, man. Do you think it's Allie for McCallie? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Let's hit this joint and get out of here. Um, follow us at Weed and Grub on Instagram. Follow our TikTok, Mike and Mary Jane. <laughs> we drop episodes on YouTube every week so you can see what we look like and see some of the products and things that we bring into the studio and enjoy uh, on pod. Uh, like Xylodent, check them out. I'll put that link in the show notes. And um, the great weed, thank you for all of the bounty that you brought for us to share this week, Mike. And um, if you have time to leave us a review uh, wherever you listen to this podcast, it really helps us. Our uh, listenership is growing, which is very exciting. We're about to break a big number that we'll share when we do. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it just really helps to like drop some stars and leave a review and let us know. Also, if you want to email us at wg at .com, what you want to hear about. Like, what do you love when we talk about you know, do you, do you love the dumb stuff? Do you want to hear more about federal cannabis, Paul? Maybe you what? do. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe you do. Guys, I'm going to university. I'm going to learn important things. So um, I'll share more about that next week, maybe when I officially can. But um, cool. I'm going to have, um, like, important dry knowledge to share. Great. I'll keep <laughs> coming up with uh, tuna marmalade recipes. Oh, and my And you God, keep I'm coming through vomit. with some real heat. <laughs> uh, Bert Kreischer, we're coming for you this year. I haven't forgotten. Um, so please, if you like this 
pod tell a bud because I'm trying to uh, overtake Burt Kreischer's spot on the podcast charts. That's yep. my goal this year. Uh, can I close with a joke from my very short set at F- SF Sketch Fest? Oh, yeah. Is it a baked potato joke? It's a baked potato joke. Um, I had a short appearance as the baked potato in the middle of the show. And uh, Mike helped me write some material. And, and one of my jokes was, uh, sorry, I'm yammering. But people tell me I've got a lot of appeal. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. Bye.